Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's my great pleasure to invite you all for this Institute lecture series. We have a very eminent speaker amongst us, uh, Dr. Anil K. Rajwanshi. Dr. Rajwanshi is a spiritual engineer, and after he graduated from IIT Kanpur with a degree in mechanical engineering in the early 70s, he went to the US for his higher studies. Since uh, 1981, he has been back in India and in the process of developing renewable energy technologies for rural areas and the great uh, spiritual traditions of India. Dr. Rajvanshi runs a small NGO uh, uh, called as the Nimkar Agricultural Research Institute in Faltan, Maharashtra, and does research and development in renewable energy, rural, and sustainable development. And for his uh, remarkable work in renewable energy and sustainable development, he has been uh, given the uh, highest civilian award, the Badma Shri, from the government of India. He also has a passion of writing articles uh, on the interplay of spirituality and technology and has published more than 200 articles on this subject. Without further ado, I now request Dr. Rajwanshi to deliver his talk on nation building, Junoon and happiness. Good evening and uh, I'm delighted to be here. First of all, thank you very much, Dr. Karindikar and for the deans to invite me, Dr. Balani and a very happy Ingenious Day. Are you aware that today is Ingenious Day? So I should have seen more engineers here. How come there are so few engineers? Anyway, I'm delighted to be here. First of all, this is my old institute. Whatever I am today is because of the education that I got in IIT Kanpur, so it's always a pleasure to come back whenever I am invited. I happily come, and when Dr. Karandigar said we would like to have you here, I immediately said yes, and so I'm here. My talk today is a very different talk. You know, I went through the whole series of what people talk in institute lectures. They talk about their things. I thought, since there are students, I will like to talk about how to be become a good human being and how to help the country. You are the future of the country. And if you will not do and help the country, nobody will do it. So it is your job. Don't run away. Be a part of this great country and help it through your science and technology and through your engineering. So what I will do is I'll, this is my structure of the talk. What is nation building? What is Janoon and how it produces happiness? Janoon is passion. I will talk about my Junoon because I think I did a very different thing that most of the IITians do. Way back in 1980s, 1970s, I went to United States, so one of very good university, came back to rural India. What are the forces, what are the passion which made me come back? I'll talk a little bit about it. I'll tell a little bit about our institute. I've come here for also a very selfish reason I need smart, young, dedicated engineers for my institute. And I hope some of you join for a short time, long time, whatever you want, because without such good people joining and helping with rural India, I don't think it will be possible to do something wonderful. What can you do? I'll talk about a little bit about the challenges that you as engineers hope to solve for developing rural areas and how we can all work together for producing a wholesome society and a great India. How many of you would like to go abroad? Raise your hand. Don't be shy. Don't be, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go Dr. Karandigya is sitting here, but that's all right. Only this much, I thought everybody will raise their hands. Why do you want to go abroad? To get the idea of, I mean, to get, to get exposed to the different scenarios of the society, I mean, in higher education. What else? What else? There are so many other hands. Right. 
So you, all of you are saying that you will go study there and come back. It never happens. It never happens. The largest number of Indians today, Indians have beaten Chinese in going abroad, either Australia, here, there, anywhere. Why do you need to go abroad? Quality of life? Better environment? You as the future of this country, why can't you change that and make it like that? Your family is here. Your every environment is here. You will not change the color of your skin. Why can't you do the same thing here to make this as a great country? It's you. You cannot say that, no, 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 somebody else will make it. I will come back when it is good. That is not the correct thing. You are the future of this country. So do it. That is nation building. You understand that? And that is what I'm going to talk about. I came back. I was uh, a tenured, I was going into the tenure track, left everything, came back with a Junoon. Junoon means madness. Because if you are not a mad person, you will not do the type of thing that I did. Madness means that you jump first and find out where have you come and make the best out of it. That is what I want because that requires a great heart, a great courage. If all the time you keep on thinking about where will I get money, what will I do, etc., you will never do anything. You will become a bank servant, trader, and I think you are in the wrong area because all the time if you need money, then you should become decoits. And the best thing is you become a politician because you will get a lot of money. If you are an engineer, which is what this country wants, needs, and you should try to be very clear on your objectives and help the country. So basis of life is happiness. All of us work for happiness. People, different people have different definition of happiness, but we are all working for happiness. Some get it from money, some get it from fame, some get it from something else, but we all work for happiness. In fact, when people are looking for more money, that is also they think it will give happiness, but it does not, but that's their point of view. People have their own definition of happiness. Good job, happy family, basic creature comforts, healthy and wholesome environment. Most of you are undergraduates. How much money you will get, the package, all the time? We are talking about sometimes somebody says three crores, four crores. Do you need that money? Have you, will you be able to even count that money? This, this is something you should think about. What are you doing it? Why are you want that so much money? Money is important. Money helps the world go around. But enough to keep you healthy, enough to keep to give a decent lifestyle, but not for your greed. And that is what is the basic problem. So if you are going to be very greedy, then you will not help in nation building. Gandhiji taught us that each one of us should become sustainable in our lifestyle, which means that we live within our means and not for our greed, then this country can become sustainable and very livable. Happiness is a state of mind. A powerful and deep thinking mind produces happiness. If you are working on a project, if you are working on anything, if you think very deeply, then it gives a tremendous high. And that high is what is called is yoga. Yoga is nothing else but thinking on a single object or a subject for a very long time continuously with a tremendous concentration. And if you do that, then you, and you can, with a time, it will become a practice, then it will give you a tremendous happiness. Then all the pinpricks, how much money should I get, how much, what should I do, etc., they all go away. So the reason why I'm telling you this is because I have experienced this with my life. When I came back, I came to a place where to make a phone call, I had to hop on the bus, go to Pune, which is the lowest, uh, the, is the closest place, took four hours, make a phone call. But all that pinpricks went away because there was a Janoon. There was something to do something, whatever it is. Whether I was right or wrong is besides the point, but that is something that we did. Giving back to society also brings happiness. It's not that you're going to change the society. Whatever you do, six foot round yourself to help the environment, that is also giving back to society. And if you do that, 
you'll get very sense of happiness, sense of that you did something for your environment, and that will be a, a, pl a place where you get happiness. Creating a happy and wholesome environment is nation building. Nation building is not by concrete and other things, it is an environment. You create an environment so that you will be born again and again. We, we, most of us believe in reincarnation, and the soul has a, you know, you have to put in a lot of energy to, for it to go from India to the United States. So you'll all be reborn here. Even if you die in um, America, probably you'll not be reborn in America, you'll be reborn here. Because Indianness does not get out of your system, wherever you are. This is a strange law of old societies, when, when you're from China or India or other old society, is that system gets into your thing, whatever reason. And that is what I think we all should do to make this country a great country, so that you, you all live happily and you feel that this is your own country. Create an environment where you would like to live, raise your family, and feel that it is a place you would like to be reborn. Janoon, I'll talk about a little bit about Janoon because this is what I have practiced all my life. Janoon is defined as obsession, passion, even madness. If I was a really slightly intelligent, I would not have left my teaching position. You know, in 1980s, all IITians were flying very high in the Silicon Valley. A lot of my classmates are big shots in Silicon Valley and other places. It is just this madness which brought me back to rural Maharaj. So it is this madness which makes you do things very differently. And it is a madness which helps create a better country, a better thing. Otherwise, you can all be bankers and work in a bank because that is a clerical job. But if you want to do something wonderful in your life, then you have to have that madness, that Janoon, to do something different. And you should not be pressurized by your family and other things. It should come from inside. You should feel what you are interested in, and that it will be a very good thing. It helps focus on work at hand and produces a very powerful mind. It's like yoga because you focus on something. It is held by meditation, curiosity, picking interesting projects, switching off your phone. We have become just like animals. Animals react. Humans think, contemplate, reflect. We don't do that because all the time you are on the SMS, Facebook, etc. And when you react and with a long time, you just simply become a reaction machine. You cannot think about other things. Just to think of you're driving a motorcycle, if there is a jam, your first reaction is what? You want to go in between. Why? There you know that there is a huge jam, you will not be able to do it, but still there is a, because you react. You don't think that you know nothing will happen because it will not move. So this is a reaction that we have developed. If you sit, contemplate, shut off your mobile once a week, and you'll find yourself, and that is a very important thing to understanding yourself, and that'll be a very good thing to do. It makes you spiritual and fearless since you think deeply. deeply. One of the great things that you do, one of the reasons why I came back, because I was a fool and very fearless. Everybody told me in America, you are doing a harakari, going back, you don't get this, you don't get that. And if I had followed that, probably I would not have come. You have to be fearless. Because without fearless, you will not be able to achieve things which are out of the ordinary. So fearlessness also comes by this deep thought and by becoming spiritual. Because then you remove all the other things which affect you. The pinpricks from the society. I became very thick-skinned. Nobody, you know, people told me so many things. I never listen, and it helps in doing something. All throughout the history of mankind, people who have achieved something, they followed what they want to do, rather than what the other things, other people think. Janoon helps in getting happiness and a desire to do things out of ordinary, since the fear factor is out. All other things are forgotten, even time, when you have Janoon. Empty mind is a devil's workshop. 
And so think about it. And then if you really focus on something, it will help you. Junoon will ward off pressures from family and peers, as we discussed. And the world is moved forward by people who have Junoon. All, you know, read the history of great people. How many of you read about the great people, about the, in whichever area you are working in, do you ever read who invented, who developed the whole thing? It's a great thing. When I used to teach in the United States, I used to tell to, uh, students to go to the library and look at the people who did the pioneering work in that area because those people ask some very fundamental questions which are still not answered today because they were pioneers. And if you do that, you will also get a feeling that how, what forces drove them to develop all those things. So rather than very peripheral looking at, I think you will be inspired by their work because I had a great satisfaction of meeting some great stalwarts, just the people whom you read in the history books, I had the great satisfaction of meeting them personally, talking with them. And their life story is a story of the Janoon doing single-mindedly the things everybody said it cannot be solved, they solved it. And that comes by application of your mind and with a deep thought. I'll tell you a little bit about my Jaroon. I was born and raised in Lucknow, went to some of the best English school, St. Francis. Then from there came to IIT Kanpur. IIT Kanpur was the number one institute at the time in 1967. In fact, the IIT stamp was not even there. IIT stamp was only about IIT Kanpur. When we went to United States, everywhere that we went, we, they said, you must have come from IIT Kanpur because IIT Kanpur was well known. No other IITs was known, were known at that time. And so we, my position was at, at the age of 13, I was given, my father went to jail with Gandhiji. And I think there must be some sanskar that I imbibed. And at the age of 13, he gave me the book, Gandhiji's uh, biography, autobiography in Hindi, and it changed my life. It was like a switch. And I read, read you know, I used to come first and second in my, in my class, and I continuously kept on reading, so much fascinated. It put me in the spiritual mode, read everything about the great spiritual traditions of India. At the age of 13, 14, how much you can understand? But there was this Janoon to read. Very little understood. But there was this desire to read. And uh, then it, was, it really helped because the meditation, etc. it started doing wonderful things. Janoon for IIT, my JE was 29th in 1967. And uh, I was not very inspired by <laughs> the education here. No, though some of the best teachers in, in India were my professors, Sina Rao, etc. IIT environment was so great, and that is why I would like to tell you to take the advantage of the environment. The, the library was fantastic. The discussion among the students was great. It was a very mind-opening exercise. And the IIT will not give you things to open your mouth. You have to extract that. And there is so much in this uh, campus, so much wonderful things in this uh, campus. Go, see around, find out what is happening and you will learn much more. You may become interested. You will become very inspired. And that is what I want you to be really engineers. Not traders, not SMS, not um, uh, uh, other things, but real engineers. Janoon for knowledge, humanities, and higher education. I was very lucky at the time. I took nine courses in humanities. So whatever I am today is also because of the humanities courses. It gives you a very well-rounded personality. Read. Today, internet is infinite information, infinite knowledge. Read great classics. Read classics of Indian classics. Because you are not attached to the story of India because you do not know India. How many of you have read the classics of India? Not in comic books. How many of you have read Mahabharata, Ramayana, Gita, Patanjali Yoga Darshan, or Panchatantra. How many of you have read Panchatantra? Comic books? Huh? Panchatantra, if you read, 
it is remarkable. We don't even know when Pansant was written. But it is remarkable what that person wrote at that time and how it is applicable here. It's a remarkable thing. Look at the greatness of the Indian philosophical thought. When you read all that, then you get attached to the story of India because this country produced, I'm very biased because I have read extensively on these things. I think India has produced one of the highest philosophical thought. We have given the, highest, the maximum number of great thoughts to the world. Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism, everything. That is the tradition of India. Read of that. Because when you get attached to the story of India, then you will think about how to make this country great. You will not run away. Most of the people who run away, they think everything is bad in India. And that is a very bad thing. Because you have not understood what India is. You have not seen what India is. Don't go with this jingoistic thing that is happening. Go through the, because you're all engineers, you're all smart kids. Go through deeper to all these process, and then you'll find that it is something very interesting. So then I went to the United States, got involved in a huge number of areas, thirst for knowledge. I met some with very great people, uh, you know, tremendous amount of uh, information, etc., which I sometimes miss because there were a lot of Nobel laureates and big people who used to come. It was very interesting to l listen to the lectures. And that was something which was a very mind-opening exercise. Money somehow never entered. Because again, the focus was on higher thought. And when you do that, because I'm telling you from my own life, when that happens, then all these things don't matter. When you have nothing else to look forward to, when you're not interested, then money enter, enters. Because money is something which you think will make you successful, or you think in the eyes of others, will make you successful. But that is not the case. You will become successful when you do something which gives you happiness and which helps you in developing what is your passion. Did my PhD in 1979 in mechanical engineering, solar energy, in University of Florida. Taught there for two and a half years. Also met my wife. So that was a very important thing. What important thing that I gained in America this is where I met my wife. She was also doing her PhD. And we both knew that we want to come back. And we came back. A lot of times it has happened that the one person wants to come back, the other person does not want. So this is a lot of conflict. But in our case, that was a very remarkable thing. We both wanted to come back. We came. We came at this place. And we act our life. Because if the matching is not there, it becomes very difficult. So that way, I, I, I consider myself as a very lucky person. In a fit of madness and arrogance came to rule India. I've written a book on this. Uh, I think it's in the library also, 1970s America, plus it is also on the net. Please read it, because you are all from IIT Kanpur. So you will en enjoy, inspire what, what, what I did. Madness that I will do wonderful things, not knowing the ground reality. Initial months were very tough. It always happened. There was nothing there. But I said to myself, if I who was used to give lectures in America, that we should go back, do something for India. And if I go back, I'll become one data point in the millions of Indians who are there. And that is something after which I never thought that I want to go back. And arrogance that I will change India. I had this tremendous arrogance that I went to some of the, I studied with one of the greatest solar energy expert. At a time, my professor was world famous, and I learned so much from him. And uh, I felt that by coming to India, I'll do something wonderful. How foolish I was. You don't change a very old society. India changed me. And that has been my story. I learned by staying in uh, rural India, humility, spirituality, and sustainability. And that is a great experience. Because by doing that, you start thinking about so many other things. So be foolish. Wonderful things are done when you first jump, then find out where you are. Foolishness is the first step in be doing something wonderful with your life. Living in rural India taught me humility, spirituality, and sustainability. Since 1981, I have tried to practice all these, but not always successful. It is still a work in progress. And the most important requirement for staying and working in rural India 
is to have genuine or passion. It nullifies all the pinpricks and you don't care what people will say and think your own passion and happiness is a guiding force. And the country can only progress when we have bright engineers like you help in developing this country. So be true to the profession. Today is Engineers Day. Take a oath that you will be an engineer. Can you do that? You're just saying yes and after the, uh, from here you'll go and th that's the end of it. Because you know, this country needs engineers. More than anything else, it needs engineers and the rural areas require more engineers than the urban area. Because the challenges are tremendous, you have to, you have very little resources, you have to think out of the box, do very innovative uh, designing and thinking and develop things. I and my wife run this institute called Nimkar Agriculture Institute. Nimkar was my wife's father. He started this institute in 1968. And uh, we now uh, have expanded it a little bit. And we work in different areas. And I'll tell you a little bit about our institute. It's a registered as a trust and started in 1968 by Mr. B.B. Nimkar. We have these buildings and extra. We have 110 acres of irrigated farm around 4,500 square meter uh, of building area. We work in agriculture, renewable energy, animal husbandry, and sustainable development. And I'll tell you a little bit about that. We try to use the best tools of science and technology in trying to solve rural problems. The focus is on technology development and some extension work. And we have a very small staff, about 25 with seven scientists and technologists. You don't require too much of staff. You don't require too much of money. What you require is a great amount of deep thinking, solving the problems. If you think deeply and look at the problems, then the solutions will come. When you have large number of people, sometimes, you know, the science is never done by committee. Science is always done by a single person. Throughout the history of mankind, the great ideas have come from single person. A lot of times, the big... Uh, systems and big, uh, uh, you know, uh, establishment help in taking it up on a different scale. But it's always the individual who produces the ideas. So that is what we have tried to do. We have not been successful all the time, but this is what we... Mostly, the, most of the funding has come from government of India and other agencies. Now we are looking for CSR funds and details is on our website. In agriculture, we have worked, worked on sweet sorghum. How, much you, how many of you know what is sweet sorghum? You know sorghum? Jawar? Have you eaten jawar? So jawar is a, is a crop where you get the grain and from where you make the bhakri, jawar ki roti. Uh, we brought the sweet sorghum germ plasm from America in 1970s and we bred with the local maldandi variety which is mostly grown in Maharashtra. And we produce this sweet sorghum, which is in which the stem is very sweet. In fact, it is as sweet as sugar cane. The uh, grain you get, you can make the bhakri. And whatever is left behind after crushing the stem is uh, excellent fodder for the animals. So from the same piece of land, you get all the three things, fodder, fuel, and uh, food. So this is the type of thing that we want to do, is to because we believe that the future of the world, you will have a lot of problem with the fuel and the food uh, debate. So we should have food and fuel from the same piece of land. So that is what we have done. We have produced syrup and etc. that is which is now being sold to quite a number of companies. Then we have worked on safflower. Safflower, you know safflower, kardi, kusum. Have you eaten saffula oil? So some of the, you know, these things have also come from our varieties. Not all of it, but some of them have come. And we produce quite a number of varieties. And uh, these are the things that we developed. And then the petals are very good for hypertension. And animal husbandry, we started in 1990, where we produced better quality sheep, which a tuning took place. So we introduced a FECB gene. And uh, this has become a very major program from north to south of the country, where in Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, etc., they've taken this as a very major program for sheep improvement. 
So these are the type of things that we do. And then now we are trying to get into where the new engineers come very handy is a precision agriculture and hydroponics. High-tech agriculture is the future of the country. And it requires a very good engineering background and engineering inputs. In our energy work, we have worked on household cooking and lighting. We developed lanterns and stoves running on alcohol. Then ethanol from sweet sorghum, now it is a big, big thing. We pioneered this in 1980s. We produced the ethanol from sweet sorghum and the detoxification of distillery waste. Then power generation, sugar cane leaves gasifier. And we were very proud that we were the national, the main author for the national policy on biomass. So biomass energy program in the country, we are very proud to say that it came from, our, from us, especially for Taluka. And in that process, they mapped the whole country, all the Talukas, on the amount of biomass they have, etc. So this was a, a small contribution to our, to our national policy. We have all seen electric cycle rickshaws. So that came from us. We started the work in 1995 when nobody in the world knew what the electric cycle rickshaw was. My friend was a very big cycle expert from MIT, Dr. Wilson. So we interacted. I said, I need your expertise in rickshaw. So he was very impressed. I interviewed a lot of people. And I think I produced the first report in 1995 on what is the problem of rickshaw pullers, what can be done. That's engineering. I didn't know anything about electrical engineering, but learned. And I think that is what engineering is all about. Engineering is a training of the mind. You can take anything, and given time, you should be able to solve it. Just that you need strong heart. You need a Janoon. And if you do that, it will be wonderful things. And so we developed this electric rickshaw. The first electric rickshaw, as I shown in the, it was in 2000. It was used, any, any time it went to Fulton, there were huge number of people who used to come, see, etc. I talked with a lot of very big industrialists, the three-wheelers, etc. They were not interested. They said, you know, this, there is no future. The future is an electric cycle. So they were all were looking at electric cycle. We didn't work on electric cycle. But this is what I am trying to tell you is have the vision. Because you are going to be one day a big honcho in some of these corporate sector. And unless until you have a vision, and vision can only come when you work with hands, you develop something. Hardware, do something wonderful, then you'll have the vision, so that when you have the power and the resources, you'll do that. Then we are now working on a very interesting technology, and for which I need more people. The quality of water in the rural schools is really horrible. They say they have a RO plant, but that RO plant never works. We have tested a lot of water. We have found a lot of E. coli. So we have developed a very unique technology in which we harvest the rainwater. We um, clarify it with our solar system. There is no um, electricity used. It is all thermal system. And it kills all the E. coli. So we developed a lot of things. For the last three years, we have used this in our institute. And this is something which we would like to put it in the rural schools. And I need good engineers and good people who want to work with their hands. All our work is written in this book, Romance of Innovation. This is my book on all the renewable energy technologies. It's also in the library. But look in the internet. I made all my books freely available on the net, because I want everybody to should read and um, uh, gain knowledge. And I think you'll enjoy on all the different things that I, we did in the renewable energy and the human interest story on how we did it and what were the uh, you know, pressures we got, etc. Now, in any R&D setup, everybody talks about impact. It's very difficult to measure the impact. But uh, we said, let us see what a little bit impact we had of our work. So I'll show you. First of all, it was 2,500 megawatt of biomass-based power plant, which exists today. I do not know what is the um, uh, state of affairs, but this is, these were put by IRDA, the government of India, in all different places. And so this came from our work. Then the National Sheep Tuning Program. In fact, this is a very major program, which is now 
going all over the country. It came from our NARIS work. Then the use of sweet sorghum for ethanol and syrup production in India. We are, we are the only people right now who are producing syrup. Then e-rickshaws concept, as I told you. And the use of ethanol as household cooking and lighting fuel in dozen countries in Africa and Latin America. I started working on alcohol stoves and lanterns for rural areas. And uh, in, 19, in 2009, we got a very major award in Stockholm. And there were two of us who got the award. The other was Tesla Motors. So we received the award from the future queen of Sweden in the same setting as you, know, you have the Nobel Prize. And so it was very nice to have an NGO getting this award. And this was on the lantern and stove running on alcohol. Daru, 50% alcohol, 50% water. So it was a very major um, uh, technological achievement. So there's a lot of publicity, etc. So I came back, and for the first time, the secretary of DNES or MNES he called me. What can we do? You know, it's the other way around. You run after the government uh, uh, people, but he said. So I said, we would like to put in 100 huts. So he said, done. We'll give you the uh, project. So I was very happy, and then it came in the papers. So one day, it was Sunday, the jeep full of these police and the deputy commissioner of excise, he came to my house. Who gave you permission to distill alcohol? So I said, nobody. But government is here, India is giving me the project. He says, anybody, even God will give you a project but permission has to come from me. And I found out that unless until each and every hut will have the permission to distill or to store the alcohol, it cannot be done. So we have a very strange excise laws, so we could not do it. But this program has become a very major program in Latin America and in African countries. And they have copied a lot of our design, and they are going in a very big way because there are no such laws like that. We still have very stringent excise laws. How many of you drink? Don't be shy, because in, uh, IITians drink a lot. Open your arms. Do you, do you, uh, can you buy the um, uh, drink? I'm, I'm a teetotaler. I do not know, but I'm just telling you. You, you. Have you bought the liquor? So it comes in the black box, black, why? Why? Huh? Black box is attractive. Black um, uh, paper. <laughs> because you are not supposed to drink it in your home because you don't have the license. Theoretically speaking, each one of you can be put in jail. There's very stringent laws. The law is that you can go to the bar and drink it because the bar has a license. You cannot store the alcohol. Do you understand? So stop drinking it. <laughs> because this is, you know, you should read. These are archaic laws. They were made in uh, by Britishers very old, very long time. But when I be, uh, became interested in this, so I read the whole laws. And they are really archaic laws. So I went to the politicians and I said, we should change it. They said, no. Because this is where they get the maximum money. Excise is one of the biggest corrupt departments. And they get a lot of money all over the country. So they will never change it. So this is the things that you have to... Anyway, so this was very interesting. Then one very interesting thing that we did, when we were working with these uh, rural people, very poor people who had unelectrified huts, we started looking at their quality of life, the other things, and we found out that they were having a lot, lot of problems of uh, disease and etc. because they were not getting enough food. So I thought of having a rural restaurant where corporate social responsibility, people will have um, uh, restaurants where they can go after. How many of you come from rural areas? So what are you doing here? And you will never go back. Farming. So think about this poor woman spent seven hours working in the sun in the field. And then she has to come home to cook for the whole family. Will you do it? And yet we force her to do it. 
So I said, and that is why they make very, very little, they eat very little, their whole health is reduced. So I thought that if we can have a good, simple, cheap restaurant where they can go and have meal, it will improve their health and they will have rest. So we developed this rural restaurants concept in 2012. And in 2013, this was taken up by Amma because the Amma whole team looked at it because I was invited by the Bill Gates Foundation to present this work. Amma's team was there. And so this became Amma's kitchen. And now it has become a very big thing in a Maharashtra called Shiv Bhojan. So all these things are providing around one crore meals at a very cheap price. Our thing was basically for rural areas, but it is now mostly in the urban areas. But this is a concept which can take on a very large scale. And I would like you to, you're talking about startups. All the time you talk about startups. This is a very great thing for startups. So you can do that. Am I getting late? Then we are talking about frugal innovations. All our work for the last 40 years was done in less than 10 crores. And I think that is what we have done. We, really, we feel very proud that these are all frugal innovations. You don't require too much money. You just have to think deeply. We have gotten a lot of awards. You can read in our many national and international awards. And we are very proud that we are the very small NGO which has got two Padmashiris, same NGO, and two different people. There are NGOs who have gotten, there are some NGOs who have two Padma awards, same person, but we have two Padmashiris. This is just a something. Now, what are the challenges? Challenges are 60% of India's population lives in rural areas. Rural folks have the same number of neurons as everybody else. Their aspirations are also same. They also want a good life. It is you engineers who have to provide that. Improving the quality of life so that they can join the mainstream development process is a real nation building. This is a great challenge. We'll require excellent engineers and entrepreneurs, need excellent R&D and high technology for rural areas, and not a jugaad. Jugaad is a lazy person's work, and you have to have very high tech for uh, these areas. Remain true to your engineering profession. A country is built by engineers, inventors, and scientists. And take these challenges while still at IIT Kanpur. Once you develop the genuine for solving them, they'll remain with you all your life. Think of startups in these areas. What you can do? Low-cost housing and all other modern amenities for their needs and not for the creeds. You want a good house yourself, all the amenities. Why can't you, through your engineering, provide the same thing? Not the very high tech, not all the things, just basic things. Clean cooking, clean lighting, some cooling fan, etc and you would have given them a tremendous jump in their quality of life. And that requires a lot of thinking, a lot of very interesting things. That is not an easy thing, but a great challenge. We are not talk talking about few things. We are talking about the whole concept of giving them a better life. And if you do that, they will remain in rural areas, they will work for in the farming, they will, you know, most of the people who move from rural areas to urban areas don't want to do that. It's through the lot of problems that they face, that they move. If you ask a farmer, he would always like to be a farmer, provided he gets enough and good, um, uh, enough for money. Clean water, good light, clean cooking fuel, comfortable home environment, modern and very efficient farming for two, three acres. This is my dream. I want autonomous farming machines. And this is something which you engineers, through the high tech, we can do that. Today, some of the biggest problem is we don't get enough laborers in the farming. So they ask some other people to come and help. Timely giving them different things is a very major challenge. And through the autonomous system or even a company which will provide them these services, they will not own that. It's a company which will give them these services is a great step in the, in the right direction.
So you all talk about startups. This is a very big startup. Startup for such machineries, startup for such services, and it will help tremendously in, in improving the remuneration for the farmers. Just simple thing like this. Need for setting up farming systems, leasing companies, and raw food processing, this is what we are doing. You remove the water, because if you take the whole produce to urban areas, 95% you are taking water. You remove the water, and you take that, and then you can process it. So these are the things which I'm just giving you a simple example. And there's a decentralized, small-scale, solar-powered energy production, electricity production. This is a great challenge. Organic rank and cycle, we worked a lot when I was in the United States, but this is something which has remained without any other further work, and I think it's something to do forward. IITK is the right place. You are in a great institute, an important phase in your life, make the most of both of them. Excellent opportunities to flower in IITK, extract maximum knowledge from it, nobody will give it to you. Use this opportunity to discover yourself. Inculcate ethical behavior. You will pass exams, you will do everything, but I think the most important thing is to become a good ethical citizen. Because you will learn on the job, but, but ethics is something that you have to inculcate right here. So do that. That you can only do. Nobody will teach you. Nobody will put ethics in your mouth. Do that. Okay? Focus on getting knowledge. Money will flow on its own. Knowledge produces wealth, not the other way around. Engineering is a training of the mind as we talked. Open your mind and above all have genuine. It brought you here. Continue this journey for knowledge gain. And continuously think of startups. It will help you guide towards R&D. Way forward. Increase your intellectual capital. This is a very impressionable age. You should do this. When you, it will define you for the rest of life. Practice spirituality. It will help you develop genuine, reduce greed, make you ethical. Reduce your energy input. I live a very simple life. I have written a lot on that. And I have shown that in one-fifth of American energy consumption, I live a very nice life. And if you simplify your life, it will make you very happy. And I hope that is what you do. And again, through the engineering, that can come. Try to understand India's great philosophical thought. Read Indian classics. Be attached to the story of India. And Indians do wonders abroad. Why not here? You are the future of this country, and so help it become great. Be associated with NGOs like us, and I'll be very happy to have a few of you. And my final slide, let's work together. A happy individual is the first step in nation building. Mantra of India's development should be spirituality with technology, high technology. I have written my latest book on this. Please read that. Because I believe that the great Indian spiritual tradition with the most modern technology is a new paradigm of development. And if, if we follow that, we would create a very different world. Not only a great India, but a different world. India has huge problems, great challenges. It is better to solve them here rather than for the Western nations. Let us build all together a great India. Nari would love to having a bright IITK students. And I have discussed with Dr. Abhay Karandigar, I think a high-tech center uh, where we do high-tech research for rural development will be a great thing which IIT can do. And IITK and NARI partnership for rural development. And when we all work together for a common good, that is nation building. And I'll leave you with a story. I'll end my talk with a story. This is a tale from our Puranas. It is a typical Indian story of a sage and his disciples. The sage asks his disciples, when does the night end? And the disciple says, of course, at a dawn. The sage says, I know that. But when does the night end and dawn begins? So the first disciple, who is from the tropical south of India, replies, when the first glimmer of light 
across the sky reveals the fronds of the coconut trees swaying in the breeze. That is when the night ends and the dawn begins. The sage says no. So the second disciple, who is from the north India, he ventures and says, when the first streaks of sunshine make the snow gleam white on the mountain tops of the Himalayas, that is when the night ends and the dawn begins. The say says, no, my sons, when two travelers from this great land, opposite ends, meet and embrace each other, so as brothers and when they realize they sleep under the same sky, see the same stars and dream the same dreams, that is when the night ends and the dawn begins. I feel that when you, the privileged students of this country, with all of us will help light up the lives of rural population through technology and resources, that will bring in the dawn of a new and prosperous India. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Rajwanshi, for this exciting talk. Uh, you have truly inspired us to take up uh, renewable energy and sustainable development projects that can impact the masses. Let's have the questions. So we'll have the questions uh, from the audience. They just slept. Yeah, Dr. Malani. So you are, you are emphasizing about spirituality. So can you also maybe dwell a little bit more on how spirituality will help in nation building or giving us new thoughts, insights, engineering? Because, see, when you become spiritual, which means you think deeply, then you start evaluating a lot of the situation around you. And when you can evaluate all that situation, then you start seeing a lot of answers and opportunities, which otherwise you would not think because you are so focused on the attention deficit syndrome that you don't see that. So opportunity exists. You have to understand and try to find out. Sure. I think it was also follow-up uh, regarding this mobile phones you are mentioning. I think there are so many distractions. So even uh, how to put your mobile away from you, I mean, that's also we would like to learn. But the, the, if that, there is that any comes, technique the, or yeah, trick. You just think about it. One day, you just forget about it. Go and fight. Go and hit your uh, friends. That's interaction. Instead of just simply, simply sending the email, talking on the, uh, you know, sending SMS, have physical interaction. Read. How many of you really read, except SMS? Books, classical books. Exactly. That's what you should do. Thank and you. And you will gain tremendous amount of knowledge. Yes. Thanks. Uh, thank you for your lecture. So my question was when you look at these renewable energy or in general technologies for sustainability, uh, w during their adoption or implementation in rural communities, uh, what are the major challenges that you have uh, come across with uh, or gaps which are existing? See, all technologies follow the same evolutionary route, whether it's a fancy car or something for the, after all, Everything is there for helping a person's life. What happens is that when you have this jugal type of thing, then it does not help. It may help in something, but it will stop. So if I have to develop, a, let's say, a, a lighting device for rural areas with uh, local resources, it should follow the same evolutionary process that, I, that goes in making a Maruti car or anything else. And that is lacking. That is missing. So all the time we talk about you know, rural development, this and that, etc., but it does not make any sense because we don't apply the same methodology and the same technology as we apply for the urban areas. This mobile phone, would you like to work or you would like to use a mobile phone which is very uh, horrible and it all the time um, uh, conks off? You as an engineer, would you like to repair it? You are an engineer, you would you like to repair your car? You take it to the... The same thing should go for the rural areas. They don't have any um, uh, aspirations less. They don't have any neurons less. It is we who have to give the technologies and the systems to rural areas. And that is missing. 
So what is happening is that there's a, there's a filtration taking place. Everybody is using mobile. Mobile, they have done wonderful things all over the country because they are using it for their commerce and etc. But more than mobile, there are so many other things which are required. Yeah. Yeah, but that is a lazy man's out. Because you want to, you know, you don't want to in, uh, interfere with anything. You don't want to take any strong decisions. Let me become financial independent. It's a lazy man's out. So you will not do it because by the time you reach to a certain level where you want to do something, you would have become so useless because you will continuously keep on making money after another. I had one engineer from IIT Kanpur. He worked for one and a half years. He told me that he is enjoying working at my place, but he needs slightly more money. And after four years, he's hopping from one job to another because everybody is giving him 35% more. So I remind him, I, I tell him, I said, you started like this. You told me, you no, know, no, let me, sir, uh, become very financially independent. Then I'll come back. It never happens. You have to start, as I started, very early in your life. Because if you start at the uh, age of 40, 45, you'll never do it. I can assure you that. And there's no harm in, you know, I don't think I, I, I did badly in the sense that I am a very poor person, but I live, uh, you know, nicely. I, I have slight satisfaction. That's enough. That's a positive thing. So why? And I'm not unique. All of you can do that. And we all should work towards that because that is what will make this country a great country. Am I asking too much? No, no, but am I asking too much from you, the future of this country? Do it. You will discover yourself. You will enjoy. Because when you do something wonderful, it gives you a great high. Do it. And I'll be delighted. Come, work for some time, find your uh, path. I'll smash your brains, but that's fine. Yeah. What do you what do you think? You 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 want to go to civil service? No, no, but you want to go to civil service? Why? I think there is scale. Huh? There is scale. There is? What is scale? Yeah, but if you have seen already, then evaluate it because I have seen large number, you know, a lot of people come to me for advice like that. I have seen large number of very smart people who go into IAS. Most of them go for power and money. If you want to change, there are other ways of doing it. They go with great intention, because, but the system is like this, that you will become a chaprasi. Whatever, otherwise you'll be shunted back and forth. I've seen very large number of very good IS officers. There are also IS officers who still very do very good work, but through, but then they go through a lot of uh, problems. So I do not know. I don't have any answer, but I personally feel that this country needs more hardcore engineers to make this. You know, all throughout the Western society, the great um, uh, countries were made by engineers, scientists, and inventors. You all look towards United States, but think why United States became United States. It's because of the great engineers and inventors. It didn't become great by just like that. Okay? Yeah. I just have one comment and one student. Comment is on the lighter note when you ask for the question for alcohol to the students. 
is recorded and if they are caught, then they will be suspended for one semester. <laughs> so you talked about the strict rules, so I thought I should inform you. <laughs> the second thing, that question that I have is related to academics. So you talked about the, uh, we mostly the teaching is one of the, our primary job other than the innovation and uh, research. But uh, uh, you talked about the humanities courses and things like that. So in a curriculum, when you force a student like me to do many humanities courses, whereas I am complete engineering mind, I want to read more on engineering. Do you think it should be more flexible or you should forcefully ask the student to do more humanities courses? Do you have children? I have. Did you ever ask your children whether they would like to study? You force them to study. Yes. Then they became interested. So none of the students, if you give them flexibility, they become interested when you teach them something interesting. And humanities, for example, when I took nine courses in humanities, I didn't know a lot of things. But when that uh, professor told me how the 12th night has so much Im implication in the modern society, it really opened up. Then I read more of Shakespeare. So very, this is how things evolve. You have to read first. Then you become interested. Yeah. We had a question. Um, sir, how will we, uh, how would we prevent ourselves from getting sidetracked if the goal is to go abroad so that we can come back? B because of the thing that, like, no, sometimes no, no, it's the things that we no, intend no, it, to do. It is, it is quite possible, but I am looking at the statistics and the data. My classmates, I am the only one who came back. And this is 1972. Uh, Look at the data. Don't talk like that. Just look at the data. That's all. Unless you have come from some other planet. There is a tremendous desire for every one of them that I'll go learn and come back, there, which is a fantastic desire, which is a great desire. When this happens, that happens, this does not come, uh, is not available, this is not there. So life is here is good, let's say. That's very good. But, but after they take a job, they go abroad. No, 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 I'm just talking about students. I think a large number of uh, students who look at the statistics of the last who have graduated in the last uh, maybe 10 years or so, a significant fraction is in India. But that's a very good thing. But at the same time, the number of students going abroad from India are increasing fantastically. Yeah, non-IIT students. Maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe. maybe. But, but see, the ultimately, is the society, maybe they are, uh, for whatever they are, uh, they want money or whatever it is available here in India, is possible. But at the same time, like in my um, uh, batch, yeah, like, you know, huh. not really, see, they, they didn't go early. They took the job after doing five, six, seven years of job, then they went uh, abroad. But anyway, this, this is a very positive thing, if uh, this is happening. But how many of them, uh, of them are actually doing engineering? That's a different question. <laughs> yeah, please. Uh. That's a very interesting question. I don't know. Because if uh, that was the case, maybe when I came back, after six months, uh, it was so frustrating. So I told my wife that, uh, because, you know, continuously I was getting letters from America to come back, etc. So I said, uh, let's uh, pack and go. And then I said to myself that, you know, if I do that, then all this talk was total nonsense. So that was the last thing. That's the only thing I can think of. So, uh, very inspirational talk. Thank you for that. Uh, you mentioned that when you moved back from the US here, I'm sure you probably would have also considered joining as a faculty in one of the institutes, oh, I had, right? I had a full faculty position in IIT Bombay. 
I had position in um, uh, offer in IIC Bangalore. Somehow, I, you know, I'm sorry to say, but it didn't attract me. Because I said, going into IITs, then you, you have a very limited vision of the world. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I taught for 10 years in IIT Bombay because I said, I'll come and teach. Okay. But I'll, uh, well, I don't know whether the sitara was an outcome of your yes, interactions. Yes, 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 it was. But, I, I, but I, I, I probably I was, did lead well. I, 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 and um, Date used to have a long right. discussions on that before it was born. So, uh, just an add-on to that, uh, as, as Professor Gandhi was mentioning, not number of people are leaving now, and, and you mentioned a lot about entrepreneurship in your talk. In a way, I feel today's research faculty position is also kind of an entrepreneurship. We can generate a lot of research and new ideas, which can then fructify in terms of startups. So, would you say that scenario has changed yeah. from the time? No, 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 I, I do not know very much about a scenario, but what I want is that all these things that you are talking is a very positive thing. What I need, what I need to see is that more and more IIT engineers become engineers. The responsibility is on your shoulders. If they go into management and other things or IAS, etc., then what we should think about what we have, what, do, what is the shortcoming that we don't make them engineers. Because once they become engineers, startups, etc., they all will come. And startups also, software startups are one thing. Hardware-oriented startups, and startups is not the final answer, because so many of them come up and they fail. To continue and have a long tradition that, when I came, I didn't know about this, but I, I've been called now social entrepreneur. I didn't know at the time. The very fact that our institute is now 50, more than 50 years old, this is, gives some feeling ki, what is longevity? Run an NGO for more than 50 years is, is a very difficult thing. It is difficult. Sir, uh, in, the, in the life started, like after our college life, many people said that like, I will go to Everett and I will come back after I study or something. But uh, they didn't come, they settled there only. The, what's the thing there that people attract to that? You have to answer that. You answer that. Yeah. So what's the thing? So many things. Everybody, you know, when we got independence, Nehru was asked, how many problems are there to solve? He said 30 crores. That was the population of India. So everybody have their own thinking. Okay. But okay. Uh, sir, ah. sir uh, when they go, they basically forget about the our like giving back, giving back to the society things. So may, maybe the one of the reason that I don't know. Everybody has, as I told you, know everybody has their own opinion. So uh, thank you. If there are no more questions, let's put our hand once more for Dr. Rajinshi. <laughs> So uh, I now request Professor Abhay Karandikar, our director, to give this small token of appreciation. Thank you. Thank you once again, Dr. Rajwanshi, and thank you all of you for being here. It was a great evening. Thank you.